Thank you for joining us today. And welcome to the Continuing Education Opportunities for Foreign Animal Disease Diagnosticians webinar. Please note that all participant lines will be muted until the Q&A portion. We'll provide you with instructions on how to ask a verbal question at that time. You are welcome to submit written questions during the presentation, and these will be addressed during Q&A. To submit a written question, please select the participant's menu, which is at the top of your screen, and opt to send notes to all presenters. If you have logged in using our web-based application, you will use the Notes tab, which will be on the bottom right-hand side of your screen, and please address your question to all moderators. And with that, I'll turn the call over to Liz Clark. Please go ahead, Liz. Good afternoon, everybody, and I'd like to thank you all for um, signing on to this webinar. Um, I'm hoping you'll find some great opportunities for um, continuing education credits for your classification as an FADD. Um, I think it's, I feel very strange today. Usually I facilitate, I don't speak, so I'm like taking on a new role here. Um, I think everybody, you know, definitely agrees that continuing education is so important, no matter what position you hold. Um, and hopefully in the next 30 minutes you'll find some new opportunities that might actually be of interest to you. Um, a little bit of history um, regarding the topic of CEs for FADs. In January of 2012, our previous Chief Veterinary Officer, Dr. John Clipper, released a guidance document, which was named 1200.1. And in that document, he outlined the importance of continuing education for previously trained FADs here at Plum Island. Um, at that time, a list of available training courses was sent out with that memo or that guidance document. Now that list, I have updated that list, and that's really the purpose of today's webinar, is to make sure that everybody knows what kind of opportunities are out there and, um, and some new initiatives that have just started, we just started uh, this month. So these are some of the things that can be done for continuing education. Um, it's always fun to assist with the foreign animal disease courses here at Plum Island or the Foreign Animal Disease Investigation Refresher and AIMS. Um, basically, when a, a previously trained FADD comes to one of those courses, they um, present the Foreign Animal Disease Investigation steps throughout the week of the course. And they also assist during the scenario, which at exercise, which is technically is at the end, the last day of the course. Um, another great uh, training event is the Wildlife Seminar for Emergency Animal Disease Preparedness, which is run each year in Athens, Georgia. We also, uh, professional development staff also puts on the Foreign Animal Disease Diagnostician Response Refresher course, which is a district level training. And that um, typically is run three times a year uh, in different districts, and then we rotate the next year so that we try and hit everybody. And the idea behind that, which I'm sure a lot of you people, I see the names on the screen that have signed on, have actually participated in one of those um, trainings. There's different districts that also do, you know, state and federal work conferences that can count for continuing education as long as somehow the information gets back or, is, you know, we, we actually document that. Um, the Emergency Preparedness and Response Webinar Series, which this is one of them, um, they're all recorded and on the uh, Veterinary Services Training and Exercise Program splash page. Um, and the two, the two things that I really want to um, talk about today are the new uh, foreign Animal Disease Online Scenarios, which are hosted by Texas A&M, and also the Foreign Animal Disease Drills, which is a project that um, was developed through the Veterinary Services Training and Exercise Program. So the online scenarios, um, I'm sorry, the online scenarios, this is their, the program goal. When we first came up with the idea of developing some online training for FADDs, this is our program goal, it's a sustainable annual online CE um, opportunity to learn the proper steps to conduct the field investigations, collect sample, and the use of PPE, and also the shipping, and then use the tools to respond effectively when faced with a foreign animal disease outbreak. So the learning objectives were to explain and follow the FAD protocols to conduct field investigations, apply the FAD procedures, 
the reason behind those procedures, and the best practices of conducting field investigations, and to also utilize the ACES tools and resources, including the field investigation manual and the FAD prep site um, when doing investigations. So the FAD CE project was a partnership between Texas A&M and USDA APHIS to develop a training program on the subject of foreign animal disease outbreak investigations. Um, the online modules were developed to provide a convenient way to prepare for disease investigation and completing the qualifies as a continuing education event. Uh, the beauty of these um, online scenarios is that they can be accessed on any device with an internet connection. Um, I wanted to make it as easy as possible for state, federal, and military people to get in and use these modules to run through a mock investigation. So that's why it's hosted on the Texas A&M website. Um, and it also has the look to look like the same graphic look as the um, fed prep. So in the modules, the FADD um, takes on the role of the investigator and receives feedback on the decisions as they work through the case. There's includes videos, infographics, interna interactive mini applications are used throughout to simplify complex procedures and to also simulate conducting a field investigation. So the goal of the project was, like I said, to provide training for federal, state, and military FADs who had always already been trained at Plum Island. So this is what the site looks like. It's USDATraining.com. It looks a lot like the FAD prep graphics site. When you first sign on, this is the screen that will come up, and you have to click on where, the red, where it's around the red, first time here, you create a new account. And it's just basically a username and a password, and that gives you access to get onto the actual site. On this slide, this shows you the first screen that will come up once you actually have your account. And um, so the screen actually introduces you to the objectives, instructions, and what modules there are. And if you remember on the last couple slides, it showed, um, I'm sorry, I have to go see if I can go back. So the three, the three um, scenarios, one is a chicken farm, kind of like a backyard chicken farm uh, scenario. We have one that is based on a slaughter plant investigation, and then the other one is on a sale barn. The other beauty of doing these online scenarios with Texas A&M is we, the first initial monies that were put in to develop these scenarios can now be used, will not have to be as expensive because all of the software and everything we needed to actually run them have, has now been built, and so it will make it much easier to go back in and change um, scenarios if you want to update them. The other thing I wanted to talk about was the VS uh, National Training and Exercise Program. Um, in addition to the scenarios, um, continuing Education Opportunity has been developed as one of the many projects through the VSP&E. These are the missions and the goals for the VSP&E, and the Foreign Animal Disease Diagnostician Drills um, was one of the many, many projects. Um, this is a three-part drill. It has EMRS data entry, talks about sampling and investigation. Um, there is on-farm and virtual drills available. Right now, there's dairy drills, there's a beef feedlot, um, swine is being piloted, and we were talking about small ruminants. And they're available for both federal and state FADDs. So here's the goals for the drill, and it's a lot like what the goals are for the online scenario. So you kind of have both ways. And these, these drills can be done virtually, or they can actually be done on site. Um, provides an opportunity to practice the skills in investigation, sampling, animal handling, and EMRS. Um, it also provided a really unique perspective for the industry to learn about the process, what it's like to have someone come out to your, you know, your area, your, either your slaughter plant or your farm or whatever, to actually run through with the industry um, to, uh, to actually see what it's about. And it allows the practice working directly with producers. So. And I just got a note, which I thank you, Eric Hess. Um, your name is going to come up in the next couple of slides. Uh, he updated me that the swine drill has been piloted, and they're piloting a cow cap drill this fall. So that's kind of exciting. So this is basically the components. It's either virtual or on site. 
Um, MOP data also is provided to supplement what is observed at the host operation. We also had a webinar on the drills that is actually located, um, it's a recording that you can actually get and um, on the bst and &E website. And I'm going to send out an email with all these different links so that everybody has them. So this is the form in order to do the actual drill. Um, this is the form that has to be signed, um, that has to be filled out. And once it's completed and it's approved by your supervisor, then it will be forwarded to Eric Hess. And Eric is actually um, taking care of handling getting producers if you want to do an on-site drill. He handles getting the industry involved um, for, the, for the actual drill project. The one other thing I wanted to talk about is Fat Eye. Um, I'm sure many of you have already been on Fat Eye. We all know it's a nationwide communications network for personnel who participate in, in foreign animal disease investigations. Um, and of course, the goal of Fat Eye was to help connect individuals with the information they need for efficient and effective animal disease surveillance, diagnosis, and response. So the, the, the best thing about Fat Eye, too, is it's just it's a wealth of information. Um, and I wanted to make sure we talked about it because if you don't have access to Fat Eye, it's actually very easy to get that access. Um, you have to have a level, you know, a, a level 2 EAUTH in order to access it. But if you have EMRS access already, then it's only just requesting um, access to FATI by emailing um, the FATI site administrator. Um, if you don't have EMR access, um, then you have to do a little bit more. You have to get on and get that level access, and there's a, a link there also that will take you to where you need to get that paperwork. The reason why I also brought um, that eye up today was that the drill information to do the on-site or virtual drill is actually located, the paperwork is actually located on the Fat Eye website. And if you click on, on the left, you see exercise resources, and then uh, in the middle of the page, it says Fat Drills, and that's where you actually go to get the paperwork to fill out. Here's some other things. I always like to you know, talk about the vst and &E. I think it's an amazing um, program that has been in existence now for the past couple of years, and I wanted to make sure I advertise it here, too, just to see what kind of training that we have scheduled for uh, 2018. And here's some also some workshops, some drills, some tabletops, and functional exercises that will also be occurring in 2018. I also wanted to update everybody on the FAT investigation manual. Um, that has also been updated. I am in the process of getting all the update chapters sent out to everyone that has the uh, older version of the manual. Um, the update package has chapters. I think there's four different chapters that had updates in them, so we replaced the entire, entire chapter, making it a little bit easier to, um, to be able to keep your manual up to date. And as part of the um, update for the FAT investigation manual, we also produced um, more a new PTE video. Um, one of them is for assisted personal protective equipment, so we have two people in that video and one is unassisted. Um, th what I like about the best thing is that it's um, very easy to access and you can either run the whole video all the way through or you can just run little parts of it. And there we go. That's the slide on that. One other thing I wanted to touch base with everybody about, which is really important, is um, EMRS. You know, access to EMRS can give you a lot of information. Um, and I think for me, what's most important about EMRS is we're trying to update and keep the FAD list on EMRS um, because the FADs have the ability to go in and change contact information. You can actually add, um, there's a box there that you can add when you did your last continuing education. Um, it's just a wealth of knowledge, and I know that there's people that will say, well, I don't use it, but for us to keep the FAD uh, list up to date, it's really necessary for everybody to get an EMRS account. 
Um, so what you have to do, of course, there's a, a form that you have to fill out. Um, and of course, this has to be signed by your supervisor. For the state, it has to be signed by the assistant director. Um, and the form can either be obtained from an EMRS network associate or the assistant director's office. Um, but by having that account, by having this account, even if you don't use it on a regular basis, because as many of you know, some people don't go out and do a field investigation and they wouldn't have any reason to go in there. But there's also training available in EMRS, on EMRS. Um, and the other thing that I've asked about was how active does someone have to be to keep, because if you're not active, then the account gets shut off. All you have to do is log in once every six months, update your contact information, and then that also helps us by having an up-to-date list especially because our fab replenishment um, for your media and your blood tubes and your swabs are sent out based on your contact information in um, EMRS. So I would beg everybody to make sure that they have their up-to-date information in EMRS. And this is where you can find, this is the link where you can find, actually find your EMRS uh, training network associates in case you don't know who that would be. So I want to talk just a little bit about tracking the learning. Um, you know, it's important that if you go back, if you're in and you go and you do one of these things, that somehow on your, you know, either in Aglin or um, in EMRS, it's noted that you have done something for this course. Like we put all of our um, courses that we do, that's tagged to your, if you have an Agler account, that's tagged to your Agler account. So the VS Agler administrators can record learning for your account. The online scenario, that training is going to be recorded right on that scenario site, which I'm able to go in there and I can check to see who's used it, um, you know, how long it took for them to do. Typically the online scenarios take about two hours to do. The beauty of it also is that you can go back and you can start and stop and go back to where you, where you left off. You don't have to worry about doing it all in two hours. Um, and so I think that it would be great to be able to go in and look and see. And the other thing it's going to tell us, is it does give an evaluation, and I'm hoping if anybody does, um, does the scenarios that we do get uh, an idea of what people think of them or if there are problems with them, because that only helps us to um, update our information. Um, and I can also tell if there's, a, if there's a question or there's something in the scenario that is continually not being answered correctly. We can go back to look at that and see what the problem is with that. And also the FAD drills, they're being tracked. Eric is uh, keeping track of those for credit also, so we have that list. And I am done with my slides. I hope you have lots of questions. Um, and I'd be happy to send this presentation out. This is being recorded, and I, I will send a link out so that you'll be able to get on there, um, get on to review it if there's somebody that you know wanted, was interested in it and wanted to see um, the recording. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to ask a verbal question, you can press pound 2 on your telephone keypad. Voice over computer users, you can select the raised hand emoticon from your top toolbar. You will receive a notification once your line has been unmuted. And as a reminder, if you'd like to send in written questions, please select the participants menu, which is at the top of your screen, and opt to send notes to all presenters. If you have logged in using the web-based application, you'll see a notes tab, which is on the bottom right-hand side of your screen, and you can use that to send in your question. Please address your question to all moderators. And we have had several questions that have come in. One asks, are the FADD or FAD online scenarios available to private accredited veterinarians? I don't see why we couldn't um, have them use that um, online scenario. We can certainly, if we get, if we have names of people that you want them sent out to, or the link sent out, we can certainly do that. I can also talk to uh, Jamie Snow about that. Question that says, uh, I think you've already answered this, but it was just asking about where the presentation will be available after today. 
So how it works is that I'll wait to AT&T will send me um, the actual recording, and then I have to do a web request, and it, it will be on the uh, Best Services uh, National Training and Exercise Program screen or flash page in USDA. Um, dot APIS, um, but I will send that out to everyone. Um, the nice thing about that page is we have a link there that just says, you know, previously recorded emergency response and preparedness webinars, and then all of the ones that have been done through the last year are actually hosted right there on that page. Our next question asks, are people who went to the FAD course through the military also in EMRS as a FAD? That's a great question, and unfortunately, they are not. Um, I've worked with the military in the past. Well, it's been a little bit different. We haven't had any military um, participants since we haven't been having courses here at Plum for the past year and a half. But I had worked with them about trying to come up with a list um, of the folks. I have everybody, if they were the military, I do have every roster of every class that's been held since 1970. The problem with the military a lot of times is that trying to keep their contact information up to date because, as you all know, the military move around a lot. So I've asked the military, and I will, I will go back to them again. I'm glad you asked that question and see if there's somehow we can come up with some kind of database of the people that we know have been trained and if their contact information. I mean, some of them leave the military. I have had people call or write to me and say, I, you know, I went through the FAD course as a military vet, such and such a date, you know, and so then we, we do add them to the list because now they're with the federal or the state government. And Liz, we do have someone waiting to ask a question over the phone line. Okay. So I had your line is now unmuted. Uh, can you hear me? I can. Okay, great. Um, so just to follow up question, you just mentioned that if we went through the course in military, but we now work for VS. How is it that we're able to get on the on the list for to be um, as a fad? So all you have to do is just send me your contact information and what date, so I can verify that you went through the course. Um, are you currently um, working for the federal or state government? Yeah, yeah, I'm working for VS in Riverdale. Okay. Okay. So I'll just send you that. Thank you. That would be great. We have had some more written questions submitted. One asking, can, and I apologize if I'm saying these acronyms incorrectly, but can SAHOs track state VMOs CE through AgLearn? So unless the person, a state VMO, had an AgLearn account, I just I spoke in depth with one of our VS AgLearn administrators this morning about this because we were talking about recording learning for the state folks. The problem is AgLearn doesn't give an, an actual AgLearn account, um, even though some state folks, a lot of state folks, they have to have that level two EOS. Um, so because they have that, it doesn't mean they have an account because they stopped giving um, stop giving actual accounts, but they still do the level two EOS in order for state folks to be able to access our training catalog. Um, and so I, we, we still haven't quite come up with a, a, a way to make sure. I, what I would do is I would hope that the SAHOs keep track of anything, any training that their FADs do in their, in their state. Next question asks, we're in EMRS. Do we update our training record? So your, you can update your training record by just pulling up your profile. And down at the bottom of the um, screen, you'll see where it says um, continuing education. I'll look it up, um, and I'll send, you a, I'll send you the actual screenshot of where you'll find it. Next question is asking, where online will the scenarios for be for F A for FADs to take? Where online will the scenarios be for FADs to take? So what's going to happen is I just put in a request, a web request, to have the link, which is just usdatraining.com, actually added to the Vet Services Training and Exercise Program. So the link will be located there. Um, <clears throat> I plan on sending out an email to the um, district directors, assistant directors, emergency coordinators, and the SAHOs so that they can disseminate the information also. 
And then we're also going to ask for a link to be put on Fat Eye, which will be one of those folders where it will say exercise um, scenarios. So there will be multiple places where you can get it. Okay, the next question is asking, what is the Fat Eye registration website? And Liz, may I ask you, is that on slide, the slide number um, 16? Is that where you had it? Yes, it is. Is it the first one? Let's the first see if link? I can. I can go back there. So if you have, if you want to request access to FADI, it's the vs.fad.i.site.administrator at aphis.usda.gov. As long as you already have your EAUTH level 2, all you have to do is contact them and ask them for, um, to be able to get on the site. Okay. So the next question that uh, come up is asking, do the online scenarios lend themselves to presentation to a group? You can use them like that. I, I would say there's no problem. Um, we talked about, I talked to some people um, when I was at USAHA about them and said if they have a work meeting, could they use one? And I think you can, because I think what you can do is if you're sitting in the same room, you can discuss, you know, the topic that comes up or the questions, and then when you click on it to, you know, come up with your ideas of what, you know, what you would have done, then you're going to get feedback as a group. And as a quick reminder, if you'd like to ask a question over your phone line, you can simply press pound 2. That's pound two on your telephone keypad. If you are using a voice over computer con connection, on in your top toolbar. And again, you're welcome to submit written questions as well. The questions have been great. Um, I really appreciate um, being able to discuss this with you all too. So, and if you have any questions at all, Please feel free to, to drop me an email or call me, um, and I'd be happy to get you information as soon as and quickly as I can. I'm hoping that I get on there in the next couple of months and see that there's been a whole bunch of people that have gone on to do the scenarios. And Liz, at this time, we do not have any additional questions that have been submitted, and nor do we have anyone waiting in the verbal question queue. Okay. Well, with that, I think we will probably just close out and let me thank you again um, for all your questions and for signing on to this. Um, I hope that we get a lot of people doing the drills and doing the scenarios. And, of course, I'm always reaching out to people to come and help with the courses. So you can always keep that in mind also. So thanks again, and have a great afternoon, everyone. Thank you to everyone in our audience for joining today's conference. The session has now concluded, and you may discuss.